What is going on you guys? It's your boy Zach here. Today we're going to be talking about how to utilize sound effects to amp up your production and make it seem way cooler. Now I'm a huge fan of sound design and I think it's one of the best ways to bump up your production in post. If you've seen any of my videos, especially in my experiential videos, I really focus on the sound design. You get to explore colors you don't see in the city and emotions that sometimes and there is a couple tricks that I utilize for every single production to try and get the most out of the audio that I've recorded. Recently, I just came back from a trip to New York. It is a beautiful day in New York City. And in New York City, I recorded a ton of audio. Um, essentially, I've spent the day shooting all these bridges, recording a bunch of sound. I'm really excited to bring that sound into the edit and uh, see what we can do with it. Basically, I just like ran around with my Zoom H4n attached to the back, it was like a road mic, and I just like was like a creepy guy recording a bunch of sounds. Then I kind of took them into the edit, labeled all of them, and I edited a video around those sound effects. Kind of taking like the inspiration of Baby Driver, I wanted to build an edit around audio as opposed to visual. So seeing what we could get with doing like audio swells, sounds of like sirens, and just the sounds of New York City. So with all of that in mind, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of my favorite things to do with sound effects, as well as how you can amp up your production utilizing just sound effects that you've recorded on the day. You don't have to go in and download any other audio effects online. And just for you guys, I have a link to all of the sound effects in the description below. So if you guys wanna do these tricks with me, you can download them off of my Google Drive and put them into your production. And we can go through this whole process together. Is that great? It's like so collaborative, it's amazing. So the thing that we're gonna to touch on first is my one of my favorite effects to utilize, which is putting sounds in reverse. Now I've done this trick since high school. Basically, like if you have like maybe a song that you wanna change the tune of, or like a sound effect that just doesn't sound cool, but you can make it cooler, basically putting in reverse can add almost sort of like a fantasy slash like dreamy uh, effect to it to kind of make it seem more epic. Usually things with like a lot of hits, so like my clap here. Put that in reverse. And it just sounds really cool, you get like that. So for this example, I'm gonna be utilizing the sound of a skateboard, so basically it hitting the ground. So we have that hit, and essentially what I'm gonna do is put it into my edit, find a spot that works well, now go right click it, go into speed duration, click onto that, click in reverse, and now we play it. If that sound doesn't sound as cool as you want it to be, another quick trick you can do is slow it down so it goes to sounding like this. Slow it down, put it in reverse, boom. And you can apply this to a lot of different sounds to get really good swells or just more interesting atmospheric effects. The next thing I'm gonna do is something that's gonna blow your mind and it's essentially just layering sound to get the most out of it. So here's our shot. Pretty empty, pretty basic. But what happens if we compile a bunch of different sounds? So the first one, what we're gonna do is just the sound of a city street. Then the next one we're gonna do is the sound of like a sl slight buzzing of like an air conditioner. Then on top of that, I'm gonna have like this really atmospheric stretched out sound effect. And then into that, we're gonna do a swell out of it. So those four layered onto each other is gonna sound super epic. Layering sound is almost like layering effects within a video. A shot just on its own looks kind of basic, but if you apply layers to it, so color grading, visual effects, something in the foreground, you're really gonna get a dynamic shot and it works well with sound as well. But to keep in mind, like crazy visuals, crazy visuals are the best when there's something a little bit more basic beside it so you can see the scale of it. So for this edit, I have something calm, and then I have something really crazy and like overpowering. So when you play the two together, it sounds like this. And then the next one I'm gonna show you guys, which is probably one of the coolest effects I use all the time. It's called Paul Stretch. Now the Paul Stretch effect is something that you can get really cool, like atmospheric sounds. And here's like what Justin Bieber sounds like with Paul Stretch applied to it.
it, it's great, right? I think they used it in the movie Dread. All you gotta do is download a software titled Audacity. Then you take in your sound effect, we'll just use the sound of like me hitting this metal here. Now that you have that sound put into your Audacity project file, click onto it, go up and type in Paul Stretch, render that bad boy out, and now you get a sound that sounds like this. It's like super creepy, super kind of horror, but you can do it to like a bunch of different things, whether it's like someone's voice or to like a sound effect. And I recommend playing around with it because there is infinite things you can do. And sometimes you can do that over music or score. And then like what I did was I utilized my Paul Stretch effect uh, as a reverb to some of the hits that I have within my video. So you get a sound that sounds like this. Okay, and that's basically it. So really try and record as much audio as you can when you're in a location. Let's say like you're in Vietnam or you're in New York City and you think you'll never be there again. And then audio can be just as crucial as video when it comes to something experiential or when it comes to like a narrative or even documentary. It's across the board very useful and very helpful when you get to the edit. And you can record sounds on like your H4n or like your iPhone. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have audio that you can use and you can apply these effects to, you can get some really solid stuff. And again, I have a link to all the sounds that I recorded that I have in this video in the description below. So if you want to play around with it, apply those different filters, those different effects, I recommend trying it out and just try it with new sounds that you've got. Um, across the board, some of the most useful stuff is like hard hit sounds like hitting metal, um, have like a diverse selection of audio, so some sort of ambience, hard hits, ambulances, cars passing by, drills, and if you compile that all together into a nice like orchestra or a soup, you're gonna have something really dynamic. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this tutorial and want to take a look at more, give me a subscribe, smash that like button, and if you have any ideas for future tutorials or you want to comment about this one, write that in the description below and I'd love to hear your response. I'm starting to do video essays as well, so if you haven't checked those out, I highly recommend it. I find them very inspirational while creating them. I've learned a ton about like Edgar Wright, Christopher Nolan, and two of my favorite filmmakers of all time, which is Daniels. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this can help you in your next project. And uh, yeah, I gotta get to shooting something, but um, just keep making great stuff and I will see you guys in another video. Take care.